I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop with you. Are all of you connected to the web? Yes. yes. Okay. Oops, there's my little cheat sheet. Okay, do you see my screen right now? I have a blank screen. You have a blank screen. I see green. Okay, yeah, I go. Oh. Yes. Yes. Conrad, are you seeing everything okay? Okay, do you see uh, my mouse moving? Okay. Uh, Judy and Luana, do you see um, my mouse moving as well? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to show you a little rundown of what our meeting will be about today. It's entitled Templates, Portfolios, Assignments, and Documents. And real quickly, this session will teach participants how to create templates for documents in their domain. Also covered our best practices for creating effective student or faculty document templates managing template folders, and making changes to templates already added to live text. Users will be able to effectively design and add new assignments, projects, or portfolio templates, and organize them for easy access by students and faculty. How's that sound? Good. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to go over today, uh, do you see uh, my documents tab within my account now, or my mm -hmm. documents page, I should say? Okay. Yep. So what we're here today for is basically learning how to create those domain level templates that the entire domain will have access to. And you've already had um, experience creating documents and creating rubrics within live text. And you, would know, and you would see those within your documents tab. I'm going to see if we have one more joint or one more visitor with us this morning. That was me. I'm sorry. I got cut off. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Was that Luana? Luana, did you just join us again? Yes, I got disconnected. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I just gave a rundown, and what I'm uh, about to go into is creating those domain level templates. Okay. So, as I said, you've had cre uh, experience creating those documents within live text, whether they be rubrics or assignments. And what you can start off by doing when creating a template for the entire domain to see, I'm going to select um, an assignment that I created previously on EDU 240, Creation of a Class Blog. And this was simply just a document that I created, and it's a project kind of document. And within my admin account, um, I have the ability to save as a template. So what I'll do is go ahead and save as a template. And what I'm actually doing is I'm creating this template for everyone else within UNLV or everyone else within whatever school that you are at to, to view and use. And what I'll do is create. And I'm going to go under my own domain. I have the special privilege of having my own. And if I can find it. I have my own domain. And I have the option right now. I can actually create a new folder for this assignment, or I can add it to a new folder where this will show up. I'm sorry. I can create a new folder or add it to an old folder that I've already created. I'm going to create a new folder. And it's giving me the option to name it. And for now, I'll just name it edu240 so that I can easily view it. Okay. And I'll click OK. And this is creating a new folder, and it says successfully created template. Okay, That's the status. So you don't have to go back and create a new one if you don't see something change down here. That's what you're paying attention to. And so when I go back to uh, Documents, I will now see that the document that I just opened and saved as a template now it has a copy and it has a little T next to it. That T lets us know that that is a template. And this template is viewable for everyone within my domain. Does that make sense? Yes. <clears throat> Any questions so far? It is viewable by students.
So when a student goes in and if they wanted to uh, create an assignment or a project within their own live text account, uh, when they um, create that new document, that will be in the drop down menu for whatever domain they're in. And they'll also see the live text um, templates as well. We'll get into that a little bit later uh, so you have a, a better visual of it. Okay. Luana and Judy, does that make sense so far about creating that template? Yes. Okay. So right now I've just created a template. And best practices, you're probably already aware of this, but I have to reiterate it if it's something that you've already heard. When creating templates, you really do not want to make rubrics as templates. Um, the reason being, when you create rubrics as templates, a faculty member can go in there and they can take that rubric template, make a copy of it, and then they can actually start making changes to that rubric. But what's actually going to happen when they make those changes and they start sending out that rubric to their students, the data that's going to be collected within that copied rubric is only going to be um, collected within the faculty account. It's not going to be collected within the admin account where you really want it to be. Does that make sense? Yes. So you definitely want to stay away from that. However, there are exceptions to creating rubrics as templates. Uh, one of those exceptions being uh, for schools of education, um, student teaching, you might want to have a rubric template so that students have an idea of how to create that rubric that they can then distribute to their students. It's not going to be a rubric that the admin account will be using for collecting data. It will simply be used as a template for students to print off so that they can then distribute that to their own students. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. So there's definitely a big no, but there is an exception. Okay. And one other thing that I would like to mention as far as creating templates when you have a portfolio that you've created as a template, uh, especially for long-term projects that you have for students, when you've created, as a faculty member I should say, if a faculty member has created a portfolio template, um, that information again will only be ready, readily available for that class for that term. But what a good practice might be, if this is a template portfolio that the entire institution will eventually use, it's good to put that portfolio within the domain. So from the admin account, um, it would be best practice to incorporate that portfolio as part of the domain choices so that students don't only get that portfolio within that class that they received it or that it was initially assigned in. Say they move on to the next class and they need that template, if it's readily available within the domain, then they can always have access to it. Any questions? Yeah. Go um, ahead. It's Judy. I have a, uh, my faculty actually doesn't create anything. I do all of it. Oh, great. Okay. So, um, as far as the portfolio goes, mm -hmm. um, if I just if I put that out in the, you know, I, I would actually just associate that with a course. If I was doing it, I, I guess I'm trying to figure that out out loud. Because <laughs> if there is a course that the portfolio is assigned, uh -huh. um, it's good to have it as something that um, not only will that class have access to. But later on, if other students later on down the line need access to that portfolio, they can then access it from the domain level templates. Okay. So if I put it out on the domain, mm -hmm. the students can get to it and it's something that they can put into their documents. And because like these portfolios are going to be done over several semesters. Right. So um, my question is, is like how do you, how would you like if I have a class who they're doing another portion of their portfolio and they've already done a portion in a past course, right? Um, and they need to add to it in this one, is it just more of a cutting and p 